<laughs> and that's what I said. But Carol, I don't think it'll eat all those body parts. <laughs> Well, the crazy, crazy bitch was right. Uh, allegedly. 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 In several ways. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Did, were you taking places this week? Uh, I, You know, I wasn't able to digest it the right way. I had to take it in chunks and doses. Oh. I had to... You know how, like, people, people take night nurse to sleep? And then there are others like me who are just kind of really weedy about sort of medication like that. So I'll just be like, no, I'll just wait until I feel that natural lull of sleep and go with that and see what happens. Even if it's at like 5 p.m. Let's yeah. see what happens. That's what I'm like. So I had to take it in like increments from various sources and reading because I tried visually to digest it the way it's meant. I was like, I can't do this. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but yes, we'll get into that. Uh, we'll get into many, many things. Um, oh, good lord. And that, that's saying something right now. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Big Damn Cast Quarantine Edition Episode 4. I've lost um, complete track of where we are. It's odd, isn't it? Is... My name is uh, Joe Exotic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and I am just waiting to die. Oh! Just... Was that the guy who was Here basically Scarface, or...? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his name, right? Um, Fuck me. Yeah, nerdy news and geeky gossip, or at the Hello. moment, whatever the hell slithers through the cracks. Yeah, although there is, there is some some news this week, maybe. There is. A certain Little console bits. has flashed its calf at the world. Flashed its controller. <laughs> flashed, it, flashed its calf daintily, like a Victorian penny... Uh, not penny dreadful. Uh, a Victorian Nickelodeon named why, to titillate. Why is it... Why is it white? <laughs> That's a very good point. Um, I don't like it. I don't like it white. I don't like things when they're white. Well. Why would you want something that you're putting your hands on all the time to be glossy white? Why would you do that to yourself? Glossy black is bad enough. I, I had a gloss white DS light for a while. That thing got fucking horrible. <laughs> Why would I want a controller like that? What? You've seen my hands. You've seen what I do with my hands. You seen where I put my hands? You've seen my hands. <laughs> that is not a statement anyone was expecting. You don't want these fucking paws on a white controller, on a glossy white controller. Fuck Maybe hell. I do. Maybe I want that so bad. Um <laughs> nothing nothing exists that can clean my tablet screen properly, let alone a white controller. Jesus, that was from the that was from the uh, the uh, KKK endorsed version of Thomas the Tank Engine, wasn't it? The white controller. <laughs> uh, well, that's as dark as we're getting this week. <laughs> no, it ain't. Is it? Is it? No. Um, uh, so yeah, I'm 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 Chris, not Matt. I'm Matt, not Chris. And we had a magical magical moment. This is my f my favorite part of of this week. Uh, occurred yesterday as of this recording. Was it yesterday? Yeah it, was. yeah, it was yesterday. Where are we? Where? I know what you mean about. I, I know how you feel in, in not being able to tell when yesterday was. Yeah, oh God. And tell me what about day it. is today? Would well, you remember last week? I was like, we all set for recording tonight. And you went, yeah, but I thought it was tomorrow. And I had to look at everything in my possession to double check. Oh, yeah. yeah it's Tuesday, not Wednesday. And I was like, yeah, we can go tonight, but we can also go on Wednesday. I was like, I thought it was. Oh, my God. Um, but yeah, we were shopping individually at our local store our big old super machete yeah and uh and we bumped into one another but not literally two meters no, apart we, everyone we walked past each other yeah. to, uh, maintaining a distance of six feet at all times and took that moment to uh conduct an illegal action which was stand there and talk for a couple minutes yeah but only a couple minutes folks because we're not breaking monsters. the law breaking the law <laughs> well technically we were near the supermarket so we could have just been Asking questions about the situation at the supermarket. To be fair, you were on your way to the supermarket. I was exiting the supermarket. Because you'd heard we'd, I was on my way to the supermarket. Yeah. <laughs> so we had been, you know, we've been responsibly distancing. Yeah. And doing 
you know, only essential trips. And it was an essential trip. I needed butter. Goddamn butter. It's nuts. Lucy and I immediately after the tension was like, that was really lovely. It was like, you really wanted to give him a big hug, didn't you? Yeah, you? Yeah. 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 This is it's really, I had to fight that impulse. It's really odd. It's... I had to take that impulse out the back and smother it. Until well, from, it just stopped moving. But from a distance, you, you attached yeah. like a pillow to a to a broom handle mm. and held it down. And then Ooh, I covered grim. it in sardine oil. <gasps> yeah, that'll do it, I hear. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um So but that was it mm. was it was a fleeting moment of sort of normalcy in a way, and it was nice. Mm. It was quite nice. It um, was the most n- normal thing that's happened to me. Yeah. In weeks, and it was it was really good. It was it was it was joyous. So uh, same time again, randomly in the future. Maybe. Yeah. Well, I can't you're schedule have it. You're gonna have to try and. That'd be illegal. You're gonna, you're gonna have to try and catch me. I'm on the cusp of calling the police on some of our neighbours. Yeah. Uh yeah. So where we live, uh, to paint a sort of picture to the viewers, we're on a hill. Uh, me and Lucy, and uh, d- down the hill. Are a series of buildings. Some of them are business yards, and some of them are like flats in in houses and backs of shops. And in the top of one of the shops is a series of flats, and there's like a a balcony section um, f- for one of the flats where they can step out, and it's like a it's a step out area of about like two by five meters, and you know that, that's their garden effectively. Um, today, well, last couple of weeks, there's been two two chaps. Uh, spending a lot of time outside on that thing, as you would if you're stuck at home. One who I recognise as living there for sure. One who I'm like, I've never seen him there before. I guess he must be the other occupant. And we just don't really see him. Okay, sure. Today, four other people. Four? Four other people on that That's balcony. a lot of people. Drinking booze. Sitting right next to each other. Interacting with each other. Playing music super loudly and spitting off the edge of the roof. And I'm like, right. You guys... <laughs> What's going on here? Are absolutely not people who live there, and I was smashing down the rules here during this time. The complete disregard for other people made me feel super sad seeing it. And at the same time, you watch it and you go, hey, "You guys are having you're having a laugh." Yeah, I wish I could be having that too, but I don't want to randomly kill someone I bump into at the supermarket because I've brought someone off of a friend who isn't showing symptoms but has given it to me. So yeah. Maybe you guys need to... Yeah, so it was, there was about two hours of that, and then they've all gone inside. So we're keeping an eye on it, because if it looks like they're all hanging out, it's going to have to be like a, hi, local police. Yeah, these guys have like all gathered here today. And and it sucks, because it feels weird. It feels weird to be like, mm, yeah. I'm going to have to call the police on them for being in each other's company. It feels almost wrong. Yeah. And yet, God. here we are. Here we bloody are, which Here is why, we are. which is why, gentle listener, um, today's topic is what is your apocalypse weapon of choice? <laughs> mine, mine, I think, is going to be a sports, like a sports sock, like a football sock, uh, full of heavy stones at the bottom. <laughs> um, e- easy to replenish, easy to repair. Yeah, you can yeah. carry it around quite uh, indiscriminately. So anyone approaching to try and steal your fuel won't necessarily go. Oh, they've got a weapon, mm. and then they get nearby and you twat them with a spinning sock full of stones. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This what this um, sock will be getting crusty with the blood of my enemies. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Um, well, I've got a very trusty hatchet in the garden, so <laughs> yeah, I'll just go well. with that. It can do wonders with hatchet. It's percussive and penetrative. Well. It's like a hammer, but also a knife. This week's like episode is sponsored knife. by Hatchets. Uh, hatchets. Hammer knives. Go to hatchetworld.org and use the sponsor code Big Damn Hammer and Knife. Real hammer knives. Real hammer knives to get 10% off your first. Hammer and knife, the hatchet. Put a hammer on a knife. Oh uh, well, this this that that does actually. <laughs> That's what the butter was for. The age old question, yeah. <laughs> the age old question, Chris. Oh. Baseball bat or knife? What in the apocalypse scenario? Which one would win? <clears throat> baseball bat. Yeah, but if you whiff a baseball bat, if you don't take out that person with a knife, 
You are dead. Yeah, but they've got to get closer to you. They've got to get closer to you, and the baseball bat is a longer range. Yeah, you pump. probably get one swing, though. You could disarm them. You could smack them in the face. You could take out their legs. Or you could completely they're not gonna, they're miss not gonna them. St- they're not going to stab you in the ribs if they're on the floor. It's fair. Yeah. It's fair. Sm- I'm a knife. Twat I'm a knife knees. man, personally. <laughs> Matthew Watson, knife man. <laughs> knife man. That's on tomorrow, isn't it? Red Dwarf's on tomorrow. <laughs> we can watch that so I can talk it about is. Red. So maybe we might actually have something to talk about next week. Yeah, we can um, review uh, review um, The Promised Land. Is it 9pm it's on? For those listening to this on Thursday, uh, it's on all. right now if you're just listening to it. So yeah. sorry. There we go. <laughs> Watch it on Catch Up. Watch it on UK TV Play. Yeah. Watch it on... And then wait a few... Wait a while and then watch it on Britbox. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear, no. Oh, mm. dear, oh, dear, no. Speaking of streaming services... Hi. I don't know if I don't know if this is just an American thing, but as a Disney Plus subscriber, did you get an email survey asking about stuff that they would might be bringing to the service in the future? Um, No. No, I did not. I did not know that were a thing. Because... A, sur- a survey went out recently asking how likely people would be to watch certain things. And they were all like TV series that they'd since acquired, including the Joss Whedon stuff like Buffy and Firefly. No, I've not received that as of yet. Um, Malcolm in the Middle was was on there. Uh, Blackish. A couple of other shows. But a few things that they've sort of picked up. They are... Uh, they put a survey out recently being like, how likely would you be to watch this series? This is us, yeah. So it's rumblings yeah. that, you know, things like Malcolm in the Middle, Buffet, and Firefly will maybe be coming to Disney Plus in the not too distant future. I think Buffy will be pushing it as well for some of the TV stuff that they can do as well. And Firefly would be as well. So it'd be interesting to see if that actually does go on there because they've got a distinct lack of... Uh, non-kid-friendly content, I think, on there. Yeah, there's a few films that skirt the edge a little bit in terms of topics. Marvel stuff, I think, I, I think is, is probably the closest you get to it being overtly. Like, maybe this isn't okay for little kids. And then there's also that film about the guy who proposes to a woman while she's in a coma and she doesn't know. And I'm like, this is on here? Why is this on here? Oh. I'm gonna I'm gonna track this down right now. It'll take me like two seconds. Oh, it's got no. movies, nineties throwbacks. No, it's got to be sooner than that. Let's go to nineties throwbacks. Just it might be there. Uh, let's see. Da da da. It's quite a few films in there that I'd never show to a child, but mostly because I have common sense and decency. Like, um, well, uh, let's have a little gander, shall we? Uh, Honey, we shrunk ourselves. I wouldn't show that to a kid. Heavyweight. I definitely wouldn't show that to a child. The Inspector Gadget live-action movie. That's never been shown to any child within my radar. Never mind. Like, I was a child when I care. watched it. Yeah, and? Look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> you, and look at you now. 32 years old and fucked. <laughs> ah, this is it. Oh, jeez. Where is this? Nost- it's got to be a nostalgic movie, surely. That's one thing that is bad on it. The categories are kind of tough to skirt. Certain things are only in certain things. But as you can see through my camera, there are still uh, plenty of uh, plenty of sky ghosts. Yeah, in they love a sky ghost, don't they? They love a sky ghost in uh, in Disney Plus. Sky ghost. There's, there's a recent film with John Hamm in it that also has a sky ghost in the thumbnail. I'm like, wow. Even now, even now, there are sky ghosts. Is John Hamm the sky ghost? He is the sky ghost. Ah. It's like a 2014 movie. Have they removed oh, the story with the... I think it's gone. I can't find it in any of the usual categories. <gasps> I, What's it called? I can't remember. I don't remember. Uh, creepy, creepy, uh, she's in a coma, dude. Why are you pretending that you're married? The movie. Creepy, DP coma person. Creaky, deaky, Dutch. Um, it, it, I bet it's under comedy. So it's a bit like while you were sleeping, but gender swapped. I think it might be while you were sleeping. Is it while you were sleeping? I'm looking for the thumbnail, but all these thumbnails think, look like they've had a slight refresh, so they're, they're a little less creepy. Why you, why you were sleeping is a woman uh, helps a dude after an accident and starts posing as his fiance. None I think. of this sounds good. All of this sounds terrible. I don't think any of it is good. Oh my god. they got the Sister Act movies on here, though, so that's a good shout. Um, Way! <laughs> where is this creepy... There, yeah, while you were sleeping. While you were sleeping. Yeah. That's it. 
A lonely subway worker is mistaken a- for a comatose man's fiance. Yeah. Starring uh, Sand- starring Bullock Sandra Bill Bullock Pullman. and Bill yeah. Pullman. That is creepy. That is a creepy, creepy While thing. While you were sleeping. <laughs> da, 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 that da, da, is a da. horror movie waiting to happen. Oh, on the subject of horror, also a little bit of snippet of news that you might have seen. Bruce the- Willis's film The Kid is on Disney+. Plus. <laughs> Uh, I shit well, you not. Well, that is horrifying, but that's not what I was going to say. Fair enough. Um, this is just rumour at the moment, but it's it's being reported with uh, multiple confirmed sources from various news outlets. But <coughs> it's looking like uh, Resident Evil 8 is going to be announced soon on the back of the recent release of the remake of Resi 3. Mm, which um, is doing gangbusters. I've been watching a few playthroughs yeah. on Twitch. It's, it is a pretty looking game. They've overhauled the whole damn thing. Well, it's the same engine as Resi 2 mm. remake, which was, which is fucking fabulous. So, yeah. But this this is uh, Resi 8 is apparently first person, same engine as Resi 7. Uh, I mean, they're all the same game engine, but uh, 7 was first person. The two and three remakes have been third person. Um, third person. Do, 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 do. Weep. That's how um, I remember them. Same protagonist as Resi 7. Mm. But. And Chris spoiler Red- alert, everybody. <laughs> yeah. And well, yeah, minor spoiler alert for a game that's nearly three years old. Um, he Don't gets, worry about he it. He gets rescued by Umbrella Corps at the end, in in the final like reveal of, oh in, yeah, this is tied into the rest of the series, folks. Yeah, because one of the one of the people on the rescue team is... Chris Redfield. Chris Redfield. And there's a DLC episode with him as well, with yeah. Chris, as Chris Redfield. Um, apparently, Chris Redfield is the, vill- is the villain in this. Uh-huh. And it's called Resi- Resident Evil 8 Village. Okay. And um, M. Night Shyamalan's Resident Evil 8 The Village. The twist is that the twist is at the beginning, and it's that Chris is the villain now. Hey. And Full title. It- <laughs> Game of the Year edition. Unwielder, unwielder. Gold <laughs> edition. Um, and uh, apparently they're moving in a more supernatural direction, similar to sure. how early versions of Resident Evil 4 were. And for those who don't know, before Resident Evil 4 ended up being Resident Evil 4, like, the move towards supernatural stuff gave um, rise to the project that would eventually become the first Devil May Cry. Yeah. Devil oh, May Cry okay. started its life as Resident Evil 4. Oh, sure. But, when they, but they went they so They are very far, different beasts. Well, they went far so far supernatural and just reworked it into something completely different, but that's where the seed that became Devil May Cry came from. Yeah. Was the the yearly Resi Four demos? Um, I think and there the is a little bit of like this talk of there being a witch in this one, like okay. a straight up witch. Well, that's the thing with Resident Evil. It's sort of it, it the way it's uh, um, presented itself, the game series, like the way it's presented itself over the years, has always on the surface appeared to be a lot more supernatural, spoopy, monster based. Like, oh my god, look at these! And then the games themselves are very science fiction, very action and, and yeah. horror. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but like you know the the mythology of it all has always kind of been like, ooh, spoopy. Like those, especially the PAL-like covers for the other yeah. games, the co- the covers are so obscure and just creature-heavy. I mean, the game's fucking weird. The games are all weird, and the storyline may be sci-fi, but it's all weird. Well, the, th- just... the seventh one's like the most horror filmy of the bunch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The seventh one is 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 almost a found footage game hmm. in, in terms of the way, in terms of the way it is structured and sort of plays to the point where there are actual sections of it that are straight up found footage yeah you're watching vhs sections. tapes from the camcorder yeah. um no i really like seven and i'm um, looking forward to seeing where the story goes next um because they made a big fuss out of bringing zombies back for resident evil 6 and apparently that was garbage garbage charles i do have it i've not played it yet i'm gonna crack it out at some point just you wait what about the um, game Sorry, what? <laughs> what about the game? Oh, well, you know, game as well. So, yeah, Resi 8, probably probably PS5. Resi 8, at this point. likely be late. Um, uh, like, like The Last of Us 2 and Iron Man VR, which have both been delayed indefinitely. Yes, which is so strange, because Iron Man VR was, like, on the cusp of release. Like, it was not yeah, it far was, off at it was, all. It was May. And, um... Here in May. Last of Us has had its date moved back a few times. They have, Naughty Dog have said... This isn't like 
the you know we're not imagining this ending i think and going well, away but please do not expect it to be anytime soon well i think both both games uh are pretty much done mm. but the reasons given were more like we want to give it we want we don't we can't uh we can't really launch them in the way that we want to i.e they can't get physical copies to stores as well as digital digital versions out so they don't want to do a digital only release for them um or a, a staggered release because they can't guarantee physical yeah. copies getting to people um because what hap- what's that the same a similar thing happened with final fantasy 7 remake where loads of people have already got it and are playing it despite it not being out yet yeah. technically because square shipped it early to to sort of beat the, the the grinding to a halt of various infrastructure but it's now digital yet but people have got physical copies and are plowing through it already because they shipped mm. it early, whereas Sony don't want to do that with with this. They want to the logistic, and the, mm. the comics industry has been hit really hard as well. Obviously, because comic shops have gone under. Diamond yeah. is not shipping anything, um, so even the big publishers, even the big two, Marvel and DC, are sort of uh, either not releasing stuff at all or not releasing their mm. full range of solicited titles on a week by week basis because they don't want to release everything digitally and not be able to shift yeah. print copies. Um, <clears throat> so everything's a bit up in the air to the point where pretty much all creators yeah. have been told to down pencils on stuff until, until further notice. Cause they don't know when they're going to be shipping more comics. Every so the knock on effect of this whole thing on the industry yeah. is becoming more and more apparent. It's just, it, everything's just getting knocked further and further back. And it's going to be a case of, I think people are, are, are sort of stealing themselves for the fact that this things are not going to be back to normal until next year. Yeah, at this point, yeah. and we're saying that in April. Yeah, and what and what companies and what what industries are going to even survive by that point? I mean, the fil- uh, films AMC, release model uh, on could the change verge drastically. Of, yeah. yeah, AMC are on the verge of um... uh, on on the verge of uh, collapsing oh, in the states. Christ, because um, of course all their cinemas are shut; they can't show anything. Um, Stuff's going straight to di- stuff that is either being delayed, uh, either indefinitely or to later in the year, and you know some stuff is still coming out, but it's going straight to digital. Yeah. Um, Artemis Fowl. Like the- <laughs> Artemis Fowl. Yeah, it's going straight Proving to Disney. Proving my point, they have so, no faith in it. <laughs> yeah. Um, of course, Trolls Two, which is the big kids movie. Yeah. Which is you know which would which was the big sort of Easter release? Yeah, that, that that's gone straight that to digital. Peter Rabbit two, which is probably going to just get completely chucked back to next Easter at this rate, I imagine. I oh, know, but Trolls Trolls two still st- came out. Yeah, but it's, but it's but it's digital rental only. Yeah. Whereas Peter Rabbit two has been put back indefinitely. Yeah, because oh, I'd, I'd I'd read somewhere they're considering re releasing Trolls two to cinemas for a limited run of like a weekend. After everything's well, calmed they, down, mostly because they know when that they originally kids, parents will want to take their kids to the cinema, and it's like. There's nothing out there immediately, but that one will obviously be one where even your kids love it at home. They'll be like, "Let's see it on the big screen, Mama." Well, uh, I think um, <coughs> e- when they first announced that it was going to be day and date digital rental along with cinema release, mm. they they did say that it was gonna, it was if any cinemas are open yeah. and able to show it, they will be able to show it. <clears throat> so they've made that available, but of course, no cinemas are open. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's just it, it's sobering, yeah. Christopher. Yeah. Um. So, so, what have you been doing? <laughs> Crying mostly. Uh. But <laughs> that's, that's pretty much because hay fever kicked in. Now, even yeah. the sun and the pollen count of the planet and the trees are turning around saying, "Hey guys, uh, maybe stay at home." <laughs> <laughs> to be fair okay, that's every that's every spring for you yeah oh yeah yeah that's not that's not just that's true like but but i'm the kind of i'm the kind of guy who's hay fever drives him nuts like i get like it's the eyes for me is what gets affected more than anything like i get i get yeah. really itchy eyes and even when i don't scratch them because as i've got older i've become a little more um i suppose uh aware of of like no don't touch your damn eyes. Okay. Don't touch your eyes. I'm not touching my eyes. This will be fine. And yet it turns out I still get like a really bad kind of burning, itching sensation in them. 
the only thing that can sort of quell it is closing my eyes, lying down with like a wet flannel on my face and just like waiting it out. Getting someone to apply pressure until you stop breathing. With a broom. <laughs> uh, pillow, as, as, we've, as we've ascertained, is the, is the way to do it now. Um, lie down. <laughs> lie down in this bath. Close my eyes. Lie down in this bath and, and stay there. Have someone cover my face until I stop thrashing. Oh, God. Uh, but yeah, so I, that's that's driving me nuts because I'm like, oh, God, that's going to keep happening. But st- streaming's been helping a lot. Like, doing scheduled streams and stuff has helped. Um, yeah, except when you're being driven up the wall by spending an hour and a half trying to get one job. Yeah, well, it was worth it, though. Worth it. That was entertaining. The, that was a hell of a stream moment. That was. That was for those good. of you following, and you can catch all of our streams on twitch.tv slash big damn stream, because if they're either live on there or hosted, you won't miss a damn thing. Um, yeah, I left it to a viewer vote on Instagram, like, what game do you want me to play? And they narrowed it down to GTA Online for a week. And we tried that, and the servers are playing up like crazy, because of course there's not enough people manning them. So... Uh, you know, maintaining everything, and especially today, Rockstar's, like, in-game, it was saying, like, uh, server issue, not saved, not saved, and it was like, great, okay. So for a few days, I was like, let's go back into the GTA V story mode sandbox and see what we can see, because there's always things in GTA V that you've not done. You think you've done everything, yeah. but there's always something. And looking through the trophies, I was like, stunt jumps, great. What I thought it'd take, there's 50 of them. And these are just like random ramps around Los Santos that you don't know that the stunt ones until you're driving off them and suddenly it cuts like a slow-mo stunt view and then you're like, oh, this is one of them. But you don't know where you have to land. You have to kind of, you know, trial and error it, like uh, baptism by fire sort of stuff to figure it out. But we went, look up a guide, and uh, we'll, we'll get them done in a few days. Let's do this. It'll be fun. Get it in. Yeah, five days. Uh, streams ranging from two hours to five and good god the lighthouse is all i will say <laughs> matthew was witness to this i sprayed i sprayed oh, silver was... paint in his mouth and asked him to witness me i did i witnessed after you. he put his hatchet to one side and picked up his phone to watch twitch <laughs> he, uh, he, yeah it's oh god there's a jump off of a <laughs> the house where the crazy lady lives who trevor or franklin can date based on who picks her up whatever um there's a busted bit of road which is a subtle ramp and the stunt jump is to drive off that ramp go over a gap in the the rocks at the coat on the coast and land on a small bit of rock to one side of the lighthouse and an hour and 30 something minutes it took to get it right because of course the only way to do it is to have the right vehicle to try a different strategy so we'd be saving manual saving just before taking the stunt so that if I die, mm-hmm. instead of having to then travel all the way back out there from uh, the hospital i just... Yeah, that would be super, oh, super Because you just load. And that's the thing, load it'd be fine. Load it all, load it a save. Easy. It's GTA 5. It's a seven year old game and it's load loads up the majority of the county around you. <laughs> like you you load. rarely ever catch <laughs> you rarely ever catch GTA 5 loading like graphics smoothing out or textures like thing yeah yeah because it's it's just so well done there's a reason Rockstar are like up there and it's because they create these worlds that look and feel lived in and and alive um the downside to that is when you load a save it's like 3 minutes till you're back in the game that is yeah brutal. now if you could have taken out all of those loads we probably de- technically did that lighthouse jump in about 25 minutes Hey, you wait for the PS5. You'll be loading them in no time. The PS5? That can't be anywhere near us, man. <laughs> what makes you say that? What makes you think the PS5 is anywhere near us? All they did was tell us about the specs. It's not like they've got anything to show us. Well, I mean, they they, they said it's out in this holiday season. Yeah, this is, this is a segue, well, folks. We've uh, already uh, talked about the controller. controller. We've already talked about it. Yeah, but we've not talked about the wanky features. What do you want? It's white. It's going to get grubby as fuck. There you go. That's the wankiest feature. It looks like an Xbox controller until, until someone photoshopped it in the black and black glossy textures yeah. of the previous couple of generations. And then everyone was going, oh, now it looks like a PlayStation controller. It's like, right. So it's not the shape then. It's the fact that it's white. I mean, it is a bit, it like is a bit more chunky controller. and rounded. It is sort of splitting the difference between the, the DualShock 4 and the Xbox One controller. Uh, the Dual Sense, this is called. Because it's got such yeah, stuff it's and simultaneously, feedback and yeah, whatever. 
<laughs> adjustable triggers. It's simultaneously rounder yet sharper in terms of yeah. its, its its shape. I'm not sure how that works. Like the, the the famous handles are there, but they're a bit more pointed, and yet the main body is rounder. the the joy the joy cons the 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 dual the dual sticks are a little more central, like by a fraction. Yeah. Difficult to tell um, without it in hand. Re- you need to see it side by side yeah. with the DualShock Four, I think. I think it's. To, I, I'm, I'm holding. I'm holding PS4 controls. We talk. You sort of rest your hands at the sides of the PS4, whereas this one kind of looks like you're going to be leaning into it a little bit more, which is very Xbox. Like your hand, your hands kind of claw around. Yeah, it I guess. As opposed to rest. Um, so you know, uh, the the options button is still there. It's now represented by three lines, like a menu. Yeah. The share button has been replaced. The create button. with create button which is three lines like a like a light bulb turning on like the three ding sort of uh, gesture lines uh what does the create button do different from the share button not much really um it's the share yeah. button but i guess they wanted to give it a more wanky buzzword name the create but create instead of so you can share clips with your mates nope you can create moments to share with your friends create content to feed mr content and he he is ravenous. he must be fed um, to, be, to be fair, actually, no, he's quite full at the minute, Mr. Content. <laughs> he's getting a lot of homemade content from the world. Oh, so the much homemade content. So much. What's the What's the best and what's the worst celebrity bit of uh, homemade entertainment you've spotted during this, period, um, this difficult time? The worst bit of homemade celebrity entertainment is uh, all of it. Um, I, I don't know. I think there is a clear winner. That's the that's the imagine. <laughs> yeah, that is from the fucking other week. awful. Have you seen the guy who plays along with it, like plays to the key? Oh uh, yeah, and he's just actually keeps singing like, on his oh, piano. Oh no, no, okay, there we go. Oh, it's atrocious. That's a choice. It was such a tone deaf video. It was so tone deaf. But hey, um, that's what rich people do. They be tone well, deaf. Well, there, there's some who are kind of tuned in a little more. Um, there's a show. Those might be familiar with. Uh, is it Cody Cody Johnson who used to work for Cracked? Uh, who used to do uh, some news, and now runs the um, the YouTube channel Some More News because obviously he can't do the exact same show as what he did on Cracked. Mm-hmm. Um, so he does basically the same thing where he just it's like half hour news pieces of him behind a desk as an anchor. He sort of isn't shaven when he does a he's not clean shaven. He's it, you know it's very sort of like angry last week tonight yeah. is the best way to describe it. It's really good. It's really well put together. Really well researched. Uh, him and his wife now produce a version of it from home. It has a Patreon. It does really well. That's pretty cool. Um, meanwhile, someone's taken that riff, you know, riff on on the the anchor and, and bulletin format, and decided to have more fun with it. Uh, absolute sweetheart John Krasinski is doing a show on YouTube right now. Two episodes in as of this recording that he's created and it's broadcast from his house called Some Good News, where he basically just rounds up the nice news stories of the day from the moment. That's quite good. The stories of people doing really cool shit. In episode one, he talks to, you know, the young girl who came back from her last, uh, her last chemotherapy session. Oh, yeah, and you've um, got the Hamilton the cast videos together. Her, that's in the most yeah. recent one, yeah, yeah, to sing. Um, the office, the American office turned 15 during the time of the first episode, so he uh, Skypes with Steve Carell and they just have a chat and a reminisce for part of it. Um, his kids designed the graphics on the wall behind sure. him. He's wearing a suit from the waist up, but like uh, baggy PJs from the waist down. Like it's just like this is awesome. Like you don't have to do this. You're a you're a big director now. Like you're the star of Jack Ryan. You got a film that was and literally yeah. about to come out before this all went down. <laughs> and yeah, he's gone. Do you know what? I'm gonna make a YouTube show every week for the next few weeks about nice things. And it's really cool. And then I'm gonna re- release a Quiet Place Part <clears throat> Two for free. No, he's not. <laughs> But, he but won't. But we. What if he did? It would be amazing. <laughs> Just to some some lucky few. He's like, you're you're the ten thousand subscriber. You get the film for free. Did you uh, have you had a chance to see Lindsay Ellis's cat vid- cat's video yet? Oh. <gasps> yes. <laughs> so. <coughs> I yes. I um. The moment what was it every 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 chapter is called. Why the moment with the um, Thomas the Tank Engine <laughs> remix. Made me laugh so hard I had to rewind it. Yes, uh, several oh, times just to watch it again. <laughs> it's great because it's like it's it, it's sort of a spiritual sequel to her Rent documentary, yeah. where it's like, here's why this resonates with people, or at least why I think it resonates with people. Here's the history. 
here's the lead into this version. Here's why this is total garbage. Yeah. Uh, from the reasoned perspective of compared to its origin, and also as a piece of media. But there was <laughs> like, also... Um, it was wonderful. Following on from that, there was a, an article... Andrew, um, <laughs> what is it? It's just cats. It's just cats. <laughs> Al, it's just about cats. Um, That's it. <laughs> um, there was a article, uh, I can't remember where I saw it now, but it speaks to some sources from um, the VFX team and uh, alleges that Tom Hooper was a fucking nightmare to work with. Didn't know what wow. the fuck he was talking about. Um, <gasps> at one point, uh, asked for reference videos of cat of real cats doing the motions that they would be required to do in the film. Oh Jesus! Uh, and then um, there are so many people in media, folks, who fail upwards. And it's insane. They apparently had six. Oh. Apparently, they had six months. They spent six months working on the two-minute trailer. Which left them the f- four months to complete the film. Wait, six months working on that first trailer? Yep. The one that everyone went, this is grotesque. And then they purposely made changes based on criticism. Yep. Which I didn't really realise until Lindsay Ellis's video. Where she showed the side-by-sides of um, Buster for Jones from the yep. trailer. And Buster for Jones in the film. And I was like, oh my god, it's a complete redesign. How did I not see but that? But it's okay, because... Oh my Two God. of the actors in the film can come on stage at the Academy Awards and throw the animators under the bus despite them being <clears throat> under ridiculous crunch conditions, which were further worsened by people just straight up leaving the studio because Tom Hooper was such a fucking ass to work with. He seems like an idiot. Like In all the behind the scenes, these kind of things I've seen in interviews, he comes across like an absolute tool. And it's it's so str- like what 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 is this what is his filmography like how did he get to this point and we know why he got to this point he got Oscars for the King's Speech which is an interesting story I think unremarkably directed yeah it is un- it is it's unremarkably directed. odd looking it is an odd looking movie but it got he got an Oscar for it and then um, he makes Les Mis which is also like it's more an interest it's more interesting as an experiment i have not seen it it is as a film the more i see it the less i want to see more of it yeah the more i see of it the more and i I speak as someone who likes les mis i'm just looking at going oh no well lindsay ellis highlights one of the the best the the the, the most apparent problems in it which is it can't decide whether it's a film um, an adaptation of the musical or a serious film using the musical as a framework um, as as perfectly depicted by the lad singing away, singing lines not to an audience member, but then in the next shot he's singing to the camera. Yeah, you're like, what is happening? Like, why? Why wh- make a choice, Tom? And I remember us, us saying that about Cats when we reviewed it. It's almost like it's going, no, no, no. This has to be, this has to be grounded. Yeah. No, it doesn't. It's Cats. It's cats. Oh, he directed. The, he directed oh, the first God. two episodes of the his Dark Material series. They turned out pretty right. well. Um... Yeah, before the King's Speech, he was mostly a TV director. Uh, he did a um, a film in two thousand and four uh, called yeah. Red Dust with Chiwetel Ejiofor and Hilary Swank. Uh, he then did us all a disservice <laughs> by making cats. Oh, The Damned United. That was good. That's the TV film uh, with, uh, Michael, with Sheen, Michael Sheen. Yeah. That was good. Yeah, that was very good. Um, but it was also, also very much part of that mid-2000s everything has to look bleak style. Yeah. Oh, su- suitable to that story, but like, yeah, the, the, and he carries that over into the King's Speech. It just looks dour. Yeah, the King's Speech, lame is the Danish the girl speech, he did in The King's Speech looks, looks like somebody left the B-roll camera on and put it on a table in a Tim Burton set. Yeah, I suppose. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, they're getting B-roll or behind the scenes and then someone's just kind of put it on a table and you've got Jeffrey Rush sat in between takes up against a wall in, like, the bottom right of frame. Yeah. And then you went, actually, that's brilliant. We'll use that yeah. shot. It's like, Tom, what? Why? What? Oh, God. What? Ugh. 
Hey. Uh, what? How about I bet it? What you about it, uh, Pilgrim? What? Quickie, hundred, um, one nine. So yeah, that I didn't want to talk about. One nine in Bangkok. I didn't want to talk about cats, but there we go. Um, what have I? What else <laughs> have I been? What else has been passing my plate? Oh, I uh, watched a bit more of the uh, the Fox TV uh, War of the Worlds. Ah, which is W O T W, which is three point oh, which is not War of the Worlds. <laughs> like, there's yeah. nothing about it which is War of the Worlds other than the name. But that being said, it's a pretty decent like invasion story, like yeah. alien invasion. So and it's a, and it's like a it's a French it's an Anglo French production. So there's a lot bits big chunks of it that are set in France and are in French, which is pretty cool. Okay. Um, Can I make a prediction? Yes. They're gonna jackal it later in the series. They're gonna reveal that the events of the book did happen in England when they happened in the book. Well, there's a lot of it set in London. And, and it's been it's been covered up. So, I don't know. <clears throat> um, this, is, this is a new invasion from a different thingy, and they know to do it because Mars tried to invade Earth in the late... I don't, I don't think it's got any of that sort of flair about it. It's very, it seems very yeah. straight. Um, okay. But, you know, the cast is good. Uh, the... the um, the tripods are nowhere to be seen. Instead, you've got survivors from the initial attack being hunted down by these, like, Boston Dynamics dog robot-looking things. So, like, the Maxine Peak episode of Black Yeah, Mer- a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. but, they're, but they're really cool. Um, uh, but, yeah, it's not, it's not War of the Worlds, but it's, it's, it's going for something. And it's going for it hard. But it would have been... It would have been well if it hadn't been called if it's if it wasn't called War of the Worlds it'd be, um, no one would have watched it, but it's still pretty decent. Um, but I, this two episodes That's... left to go. Uh, it looks, eh, I'm, I'm enjoying it's the wrong word, but I I, sure, I certainly don't hate it. That seems to be the thing, doesn't it? It seems like it's more of an IP thing in terms of, well, we can we can make War of the Worlds, so let's just make it. <laughs> So let's make it. But let's not make War of the Worlds. Here's this other script we've been wanting to do for a yeah, while. Yeah, it is. It, yeah. It, it's yeah. Just, just nothing. It, it, it's, it's, it's a Cloverfield paradox. Like, they've got... There, there's going to be some throwaway reference in it somewhere to something from the I haven't. Worlds I haven't some seen way. anything in it so far that's been like, yep, that's... Like, no. I, I, let, let's see. Will it, will it be really, really, really um, uh, minimal? Uh, and be something as pathetic as like at one point we just see like the remains of somebody near you know near a pond say, and their blood splattered all over the grass and as everyone as they're leaving like we gotta get out of here they'll start to leave there's just a lingering shot on the weed covered in red and that's it and then they go ah you see what we did I there was I don't uh, think it was it's a, quite it was a nod to the original story I don't think it's, it's quite like, that po faced. Uh, um, yeah, give it time. It is. It is French. Well, so true. Uh, to our French listeners, French. um, to, oh, to our partly French listeners, bite me. <laughs> um, I'm four episode. <laughs> we're four episodes into season three of Westworld. How was that? Very, very good. Um, very different from what I yes, hear. Yes, very different. And season uh, episode four comes with a hell of a reveal. Um, okay. Which is it's like it's like it's like the Zion of the Matrix in terms of yeah we, you know yeah that we told that yeah. bit saw that we're going over here yeah. now to tell you what all this is um, about. It's an interesting uh, <clears throat> development of the ideas in the first two seasons while also still being a continuation thereof, and mm. um, again, fucking incredible cast, just really good Who'd cast knocking it out of the park. Who would have thought a movie about robot cowboys would lead to this? Yeah, it's um, it, it's going places, and it's uh, going interesting places. So, to say much more would be to spoil, so I shall not. But suffice to say, give it a go. You might enjoy it. I liked it. I like it a lot. But what would you say, Matt, in terms of entertainment people stuck at home right now can consume? Oh, God, here we go. Is Let's the do it. most... Let's do it interesting thing that they could be watching i mean interesting is perhaps the wrong word but sort of morbidly hypnotic yeah, morbidly thing hip- that they hypnotic, could be watching like terrifying um 
<laughs> like watching a car crash in slow motion and then you feel dirty for having watched it because no one should get any entertainment value from the amount of suffering that said thing contains. <clears throat> but one is so fascinated by the sort of human detritus that populates the frame for so much of it. Oh, there are some bright spots in there. Uh, there are some, there's a couple, a couple of people in there. You're just like, yeah, that person's okay. But, um, Tiger King. But that's like a special event. Yeah. yeah, Tiger King. Spoilers ahead for the Netflix documentary series Tiger King. Although, based on what I know of this show, um, you can't really have it spoiled for you because it's still just gut, a gut punch of I can't quite. Well, a lot of it is, is stuff real. like is, there's matters of record, <laughs> but yeah, part of the joy of watching it mm. is just the escalation of like this is about oh, yeah. a guy who does does he breed tigers illegally and what. Oh, is he looking after the tigers properly? And then someone wants to get him. Uh, someone wants to get him shut down because they don't think he's looking after the tigers properly. But then there's this really rich dude over here who's got like a harem who's who's making tons of money from breeding tigers. And then, but this woman who's trying to free all the tigers, but then she's making money from from uh, a pack of rescued tigers. <laughs> and maybe she killed her husband. <laughs> maybe she doesn't. Said husband. To the tigers, but um, that's okay because it's a happy it's a happy story because it's about a wedding. Yeah, although that is an odd a wedding, a three way wedding, but and... both both of his husbands were straight. Uh, oh, but also he's a uh, he's also he's a musician uh, whose voice is ah. surprisingly good compared to his speaking voice in a way that is sort of terrifying to witness. And also he wants to be president. And now he's Please. in prison. Yeah, and it looks like they're going to do a follow-up episode talking yeah, to him, apparently. Yeah, which Carol Baskin has refused to be involved with. Ah, good luck. Um, good so. luck, Carol. If you're not in it, they're going to do a whole segment about people's thoughts about yeah. you. And also, as of a few days ago, the uh, detective who was in charge of the investigation, which was closed into the disappearance of her husband, has reopened it. Oh. Because, appara- because apparently some people have come forward with information. Well, there is that moment in the, in the show, so there's talk about, you know, where... where about um, oh about you know what did you kill her husband? Did you feed the uh, first husband? Did you feed him to the tigers um, to inherit his money? Because the the family of the, of her first hu- husband got froze out of the uh, of the will and the inheritance. Very um, last second, yeah. in, a ca- in a Casey case and with his horrible wife before he passed yeah. away kind of situation, his will was changed very specifically in Carol's yeah. favor in like the fortnight before he went. And missing. then um, there's a moment later on where. Joe, it's it's uh, interspersed with a video of Joe, uh, one of the tigers going after Joe's shoes, and uh, and and sort of nibbling on him. And then mm. it, there's a bit of of Carol and Carol and Carol being like, "Well, you know, you know, if you really, if someone really wanted to, you know, get the the tiger to go for him, they should have, I don't know, drenched him in sardine oil or something." And then all of a sudden, people just went, "Huh." What a strange thing to say. And what so an oddly, with a smile on her face as well. What specific thing to say. Mm. So, explain to the listeners who might not know the, the, the basic structure of this, but are like, this sounds insane. Well, the, well, the, the basic premise of Tiger King is... So it starts... Uh, starting, I suppose, with who is, who is Joe exactly? So it starts as a, a sort of look at the life and career of Joe Exotic, who is a... Or who was... is He's in prison at the moment. Um, he owned a uh, big cat sort of um, zoo in... Uh, oh, like the Lion Man, but more illegal. Yeah, and of a question of legality and was sort of... Is he Florida-based? I can't remember. Some of it's in Florida. Some, I think it's Oklahoma. Oh, okay, um, I'll, I'll, I shall, I shall, I shall fact check yeah. it. I'll get, I'll get um, it up. I'll get it up. And then when I've done that, I'll Google the details. As it's looking into his life and history with big cats and the sort of question the morality of, of raising big cats in captivity and 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 it just suddenly descends into like a conspiracy to murder. Like he's in con- he's in prison for conspiracy to murder Carol Baskin, who is a a a, a, a big cat rescue activist but who also runs a zoo with these big cats that she's rescued and it's Mm. just it's very much like a a battle of egos and uh like them like 
metaphorically slinging shit at each other while, you know, they've both got these parks which are in questionable repair, lots, lots of cults of personality going on and the sort of people that surround these larger-than-life uh, personalities that make a hobby out of making pets of, of endangered species. And it just it just escalates in a really strange way and it starts being about this this sort of like um misfit who found sort of comfort in looking after these animals Mm. but then it, it raises more and more questions about his character and his persona of of just how manipulative and cruel he might be and yeah. the, what he puts other people through and how innocent is he in the sort of uh, plot to murder uh, Carol Baskin, which of course failed. She's still alive. Uh, she's a member. She's in the documentary and she's being talked about much, but then yeah, to, going back on that of like how, um, uh, she might then is the, the reveal that she might have murdered her husband and then both of Joe Exotic's husbands were straight and they were only really in a relationship with him because he was getting him hooked on drugs and all that kind of stuff. Then it just goes to so many places to the point where well, me and Keeks just watched the whole thing in a, in a in a single sitting just because every episode just ending with like, oh, hang on, what? Every, every at the end of every episode was a was a hang on what moment, like it just drops yeah. a bit of information and you're just like what what the fuck, what the fuck, and it just hi are you still watching Tiger King Murder Man yes May- yes. yes I am um <laughs> it, and it just it and it just gets weirder and weirder and more sort of morbidly fascinating and it's awful and the things that people are going through in this are, are, are awful but you just can't. I couldn't tear my eyes away from just witnessing the the nonsense that was going on. Corey of of Double Toasted um, podcast uh, series described it as uh, it's it's like something the Coen brothers would release an adaptation of as a film. And people would say, you know what? I love them, but like this, I felt this one was just a bit too far fetched. Yeah, it is. It is very much a case of this is all real stuff <clears throat> that you couldn't fucking make up. Yeah, and it, 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 it just it, the mind couldn't go there naturally. You know, it, it is it is almost completely unbelievable. But then they'll show you footage of stuff that, that actually happens, and you're going, "What the fuck?" That actually happened? Yeah, actually happened. Well, poor, poor example. Um, for starters, yeah, it's it's Win- Winwood, Oklahoma, is where where uh, the Great Winwood Exotic Animal Park. Yeah, is uh, at one point Carol Baskin wins a defamation suit against. Yeah, because Joe the, he started using a very similar logo to hers for some of his endeavors right. to sort of link them together. Uh, sort of a bit of a fuck you. Um, so yeah, and she did. She did the American thing and sued yeah. him, and won, and presumably he couldn't pay for the entirety of the bill, so had to like in yeah. a in a sort of a, a divorce or or a you know a, um, a repo kind of situation. Uh, he had to give her items attained. Well, yeah, to that's how he stuff, that's basically. how he started to lose yeah. sort of control of the park because then he brought in someone to take it over, and they are uh, the guy who comes in to take it over is. Yeah, this is uh, Jeff Lowe. Yeah, some sort of weird fucking yeah. polyamorous sugar daddy sort of <laughs> dick swinger. Like, it just, it, it, like, really, that kind of sort of obnoxious, quote unquote, a alpha ma- male a, personality. A, a male fraud convicted South Carolina, Carolinian businessman. Yeah. Yeah. Who, um,. Yeah, like it's like businessmen. You have an interest in this place because you are on the same crazy radar as these guys, yeah. and probably the moment it came up, your brain went ding ding ding. Well, ding, the, the imp- must go over the there. The implication is that Jeff Lowe set up <clears throat> Joe Exotic to take the fall for the Carol Baskin murder plot. Um, Jesus. So, it, it, but again, that's not. There's no answers here because 
what straight answers can you get and documentaries are always well, biased but it's it does a pretty good well, job of just showing you stuff and then going what about that huh yeah well like how he reacted to having to give up half his stuff he just filmed a series of was it youtube videos oh yeah 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 where he's just destroying his possessions like shooting them up yeah. and saying like come and get it here's your stuff carol it's yours come and get well, it yeah he did there As he are, shoots up his like his like car and his and his like favorite like barbecue. There are, and there are several uh, uh, scenes of, of of him and his and his friends just you know going to the gun store, buying some fucking dynamite and a bunch of bullets, putting dynamite things and shooting the dynamite and making things blow up. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? Um, he always carries a gun. Oh my gosh. Constantly is carrying a gun. Uh, it's just. I can't I can't get my head around it it's so it's just it doesn't feel real does it go much into his upbringing at all a little but but is he a bit of a Tommy Wiseau-esque figure in terms of no I mean believe me wherever he came from that isn't the story some of that stuff is public record and what he, his sort of version of it and <clears> what <throat> probably true aren't really that different but it's just the way he spins it. Yeah. Um, and sort of like the death, the death of his brother is he, he, he claims is the biggest sort of he He dedicates the park to him and sort of yeah. that business venture to him. So um, there is that sort of relationship there. So it's not like it's, it's not, it doesn't seem, Oh, sorry. It doesn't seem like it's a case <clears> of, <throat> you know, weird upbringing made weird person um it's just it's more weird person landed like mr bean in a beam of light one day from the stars and just assumed the position yeah i, I you just he <laughs> and began to live he's like a caricature it's like it's almost like a real life version of big gay al yeah yeah but i mean the dress is exactly the same way f- fucking more murdery mm. oh, but then God, is yeah. he murdery or is does he just like guns um, what's what's the difference who knows i don't know there is that weird line in america of people who don't seem to think of them as tools of i mean death. He, they just seem I to mean, think of does, them as something cool to hang out and hold and show off there there is footage of him threatening people like he's shot videos with guns being like Hey, this is what you're gonna get if you try and come and take my animals and like shooting dummies and stuff and oh god, you know, shooting uh, effigies of Carol Baskin and things like that. And it's just no oh, fucking hell. Why? Why wasn't he nominated for press? <sighs> yeah, he goes in his political career. He he, he ran as a as a writing independent for president and then ran for governor of. The- <laughs> Of Oklahoma. of Oklahoma as a as a libertarian, libertarian. after that, yeah. Despite not really knowing what that meant. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and it just... It, it goes to so many... I, I keep saying the same thing, it just goes places because it you just don't <laughs> expect what you get out of it when you go in because it, it, it really throws you for a loop in sort of the directions that these people's lives take. And it also does a good job of, like, not... Uh, th- th- there's a great uh, part of it where the Saf, the uh, zookeeper who, who loses their arm. Yeah, that's the, the thing that happens. The way that he's shot... Um, also, the, yeah, the documentary Miss Genderson, Saf is a man. Saf identifies as male, mm. but all the contemporary footage that's used in the documentary misgenders him and uses female pronouns. Um not that he seems particularly bothered, but it's something that he's addressed and has been like, yeah, I'm really, yeah, I'm not really bothered what people call me, but I'm, I'm a dude. Uh, it's, it's kind of, it's kind of annoying that they made a documentary and yeah, well, got that wrong. The, the, the guy who produced the documentary was like, yeah, the, the, all the footage we use misgenders him and the edit that we went with just doesn't really correct it. But for the record, yeah. Um, but yeah, Saf, when Saf loses his arm, like, Hearing about it happen, it's then they change the way that he sh- shot and framed, so that you can see the fact that he's missing an arm. But before that, they don't. Until they get to that, they they, they the way they shoot him, you don't see it. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, 
Like, oh, they're very fuck. selective for the sake of the narrative. Yeah, this person that's been talking all along is the person in that clip who's missing an arm because they also have the footage of it. Yeah, of, of them being pulled oh, out God. of the the um, the uh, the pen, and and Saf is probably the he's one of the bright lights in in the um, in the documentary of like someone who just wanted to look after the animals and was just trying to do what they do and doesn't have sort of any weird dark secrets or ulterior motive and is now, you know, sort of a wet, apart from that world. Isn't a part of it anymore. Yeah. And one of the few sort of, seems like one of the few like decent people that's involved in this whole fucking thing. Because um, that seems to be the main takeaway from it uh, for a lot of folks who've, who've, who've been speaking about it yeah. this past week is that it's, it, it is like you say, it's car crash. Like, you have to find out more. You have to keep watching. But this is not necessarily a story about people you, you're going to like. Oh, God, no. Or or spend or want to spend time with them. Like, un- a, lot, a lot of the time in documentaries, you come out the back of it going, I'd love to have a beer with them. I can understand. Their brains a bit more. I can understand why people flocked to, why a certain kind of person flocked to Joe Exotic. Because he does have that sort of, not that he's got a good personality, but he's got so much personality. But it sort of yeah. bludgeons you into <laughs> into subservience, uh, and also that we're friends, right? We're yeah. friends, right? Uh, um, sure, Joe. Yeah, whatever. That's cool. You do Great. Sort of, I'll come. I'll come around for dinner tomorrow. Oh, right. Okay. I guess Joe's coming to dinner tomorrow. As again. things get worse and worse, you do sort of see that sort of go out of him. Yeah, as it goes on, and it sort of things go get worse and worse and worse. Um, but yeah, like there are so many bad people in this mm. like the dude who uh, i can't remember his bloody name now um well the dude who runs like the really upmarket breeding operation and has like a harem of 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 fucking wives that are his apprentices that they then publish publicity material for the sanctuary with like doing swimsuit poses with tigers and stuff oh, and then one of the women who was a part of that thing and then has since left does some interviews as well and is like yeah it's just it's it's a it's, like, it's almost like a cult Jesus <laughs> um, Christ so it, yeah it's um fuck man I, I don't I, I don't know what else to say about it without you kind of just have to watch it, it it's not let it wash over you yeah because it's just or don't like I can understand why people would not want to watch it it's like it's a it's a documentary about horrible people doing horrible things to I'm, each other I'm kind of in that camp in a weird yeah. way. Like I, I, it's one of those where I think one day, probably one of those nights where like rendering's taking a million years, and I've got Netflix up. I'll be like, "Go on, I'll try again," and I'll get in and see what happens. But it, it's one of those that as soon as I tried some, Lucy turned to me, my wife turned to me, and went, "This is not one you're gonna like." And I was like, "Oh, what makes you think that?" She was like, "I've watched it all, and I know <laughs> exactly that this is one of those shows that's just gonna <sighs> make you angry." And I said, like, why? Is it because the people? She went, right, well, for starters, they don't really tell you what's happened to the tigers by the end. And I know that'll get on your wick. And I went, wait, they don't? <laughs> why? And she went, because it isn't really about the tigers beyond episode two. <laughs> I was like, oh, God. Yeah, it, is, it just becomes just this sort of twisted web of... of... <laughs> Mur- murder, Con- mayhem and madness. Yes, yeah, murder, mayhem and madness. Conspiracy to murder. Um, she reminded me as well she said you've already watched a documentary about this guy and I went have I she went yeah we watched a Louis Theroux yeah Louis Theroux did a, did a thing with Joe Exotic years ago yeah yeah and I was like oh my as soon as she said that it all came rushing back and I went yeah I can't I can't watch this right now I, I need to be in a world where I'm in a decent mood and I'm like go on let's let's misery myself up for a few hours let's do it let's watch something that's gonna baffle me um because I just remembered, like, oh, God. Oh, my God. Like, I, I'm so angry. I'm so angry at these people. It is, Why? It is <laughs> fascinating. But it is it's very much a case of being watched. It's, like, similar to the way I watch things like um, Leaving Neverland and, and, the, and the R. Kelly documentary. I've just been, like, it does get yeah. me really angry because <clears throat> it... Because there's that sort of disbelief of yeah. how the... F- is this being allowed to happen 
but how did people get away with X Y Z? But, it's, but there is also how are people fine with X Y Z? But there is also a fascination of like how this stuff kind of worked and the sort of the things that had to happen or not happen and the sort of chain of events that would allow this these events to keep occurring mm-hmm. for so long without intervention um and you know for tiger king it's a case of what well, people care less about animal abuse than do about human abuse for the most part um yeah but just the things that went on or are alleged to have gone on are mind-blowing um yeah yeah so that's a thing that's a thing that's tiger king well if people want more comforting viewing in these dark times yeah. uh you could always watch uh the queen's little address to the nation earlier in the oh, week where she wore a green t-shirt not real not understanding how photoshop works that's the best part of it well well a green dress, came on camera and the queen does not a... wear t-shirts Oh, you know she totally rocks a T when the cameras aren't on. Um, the the Queen did address the UK basically saying, like, yeah, it's difficult times. And uh, it's important to listen to the right people and look out for each other more than anything. And wagwan. Wagwan. And then she hung up. Um, wagwan, your highness. Whichever speechwriter gave her the line, we will meet again, is a raging genius. Like, that's genius. Well, you know, she... Im- immediately invokes, like, you know, World War Two kind of, like, we're in yeah. this together. So it's like, oh, God damn it, well done, whoever wrote that line. I bet all the olds fucking loved it. I hope so. I hope it made them feel reassured more than anything, that, like, we got through that, we'll get through this. But the olds don't get the best of this, because, as you said, she made the choice of wearing <laughs> green... A beautiful, bright green. A, some might say, chroma key green. <laughs> and the internet has been taken advantage. Oh, yeah. Have you seen many of the edited I've pictures seen the, so far? Uh, the Star Trek TNG uniform. Yep, I've, I've seen, a, seen... The pun- a Punisher um, like bulletproof yep. vest. I've yeah. seen an Iron Maiden shirt. Yes. Uh, I've seen... Yeah, yeah. Um, Oh, Guns, Guns N' Roses. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. Basically, basically any rock yeah. thing, any rock album cover that became a Primark t-shirt about 10 years ago. That's, that's on there, yeah. I like, saw... Like, ACDC, you know, the, sick, like, the, sick the logo. Costume. Yes, I saw one. Uh, uh, I've seen Joe Exotic themed ones. Oh, very good. Um, very good. I, I think my favourite so far has just been various close-ups of people's Animal Crossing characters. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Animal Cross. Uh, someone made all the Tiger King folks in The Sims. Oh, good God! S- that's an article that 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 crossed my uh, crossed my phone recently. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> get some weird articles crossing your phone at the minute. Yeah, there, there's all sorts of weird <laughs> shit on the uh, various WhatsApp groups I'm a part of. Um, oh God! Uh, and uh, and the other one I keep, she was wearing a jacket made of uh, corgi fur. <laughs> which I thought was the right amount of morbid. I was like, that yeah, is funny. Well done, folks. So uh, she needs more. She reassured the nation and gave everyone stuff to tit around on Photoshop with for a couple of hours. So Yay, thank you, well your done. majesty. Your maj. Your majesty. Uh, we, may not, I think that- we may knock the royals, but she, you know, like someone had to actually say something to the whole of the UK and she'd be like, don't be silly. Look after each other. Yeah. Wagwan. And then she, like I said, hung up from the group chat. She left. <laughs> she left the house party chat, um, and then she got hacked into her PayPal. Got hacked into later. So left. Left the Zoom conference. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that's probably it for this week, don't you, Cocker? Yeah, we got we got out on the emails nice, to touch nice on this brief week, one. or is that a is that a bright and breezy? No, easy no, cheesy? not much. Not much going on I, uh, in the old inbox. It's almost as if. Nothing is happening in the world. <laughs> well, I know we got a lovely, we got a lovely response on the, the Twitter that I want to bring up. Um, okay. Yesterday, when we when we took a snapshot of ourselves, we were both uh, we were both around. Oh uh, yeah. Other, as, uh, and lovely, lovely friend of the show, Billy Tracy says, "Love Billy Tracy. This is so damn cute. Missing you guys. It's been great having you both, keeping me company with your nonsense via the damn cast. And I've had a few people saying that on um, the Twitch streams as well that they." They've either been going back and listening to episodes they've not heard yet, or they've been going back to the beginning and just binging the show. 
There's plenty of the fuckers. There's plenty of the buggers. There's, there's 198 now, son! Oh, God. Um, and, hey, if the, show's, if the show has kept you sane during this period, um, do let us know, because it'd be nice to know who, who is going back through the whiffles and waffles to find entertainment and these dark times and pretending that yeah. and pretending that they're uh, looking forward to the upcoming release of Suicide Squad or whatever. Oh, fuck. Um, there, was a, like, there was a moment where I was sort of optimistic about that film. About Suicide Squad 2016 yeah. as opposed to Suicide Squad 2021. Let's fight. Now, the, the Suicide Squad I'm optimistic about because... Jams Gun. Gun. Yeah. Jams Gun. And- uh, who was one of the many people who've joined live tweets of their work on social media? Yeah, there was a quarantine party uh, for Guardians a, last night while we slept. A, <laughs> there's a Twin Peaks rewatch going on at the moment with a bunch of the Twin Peaks cast that's all over my timeline. So not David Lynch. Uh, I don't know if David Lynch does Twitter. <laughs> he's too he's too busy doing weird short films on Netflix. How do I post this short film to Twitter? <laughs> Send. Uh <laughs> Total bullshit. <laughs> Where can I find the moving picture of Kermit the Frog drinking iced um. tea? <laughs> send. Ah. <laughs> David, you don't have to yet you don't have to write send at the end of every tweet. Send. Stop. Ah. <laughs> Where's this thing? I've got to look it up for you. Um <laughs> that my David Lynch impression is turning into an impression of one of the fates from Disney's Hercules. You know the ragged old uh, ladies who share an eye between each other. They have the the, the string of fate. What's wrong with these scissors? Um, <laughs> That's my David Lynch now. <laughs> have you got something there that you can watch Netflix on? I do. Brooklyn? I do. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I do. Go to Netflix <laughs> and search. What did Jack do? <laughs> oh, 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 was it? Is it watch all of Tiger King? Uh, well, <laughs> something happened. My dears, what did Jack do? Is this a David Lynch short? This is a David Lynch short. Seventy minutes long. I'm not going to make you watch the whole thing, but I think you should just start it up. I'm gonna. I'm. Oh. I'm gonna. Say, I'm adding it to my list, and I'll give this a watch while I render tonight. I. I, I think you need to. I need you to see some live reaction on the podcast to the opening of it. Oh, okay. All right. Okay. Do it. Do it. Okay. Do it now. Okay. There might be a bit of leaked audio here. That's okay. Uh, there might be a tiny bit of leaked audio in the podcast here. Um, That's okay. <laughs> so this is uh, what this is. What is it called? What did Jack do? What did what did Jack do? Well, you're gonna find out if you watch. What did Jack do? But it's French so far. What did Jack do? This is real audio. <laughs> what did he do? No one can hear. No one can hear any audio. <laughs> okay, I'm seeing a black and white room. Yeah, uh, you will. You will. There's like film grain and a monkey. So- what is happening? <laughs> what is... <laughs> David Lynch is having a cigarette with a monkey in a suit. Jack. Jack's the monkey? Jack's the monkey. You know anything about birds? Jack. <laughs> <laughs> it's just these lingering shots of David Lynch. Just a simple question. Yeah, but also, also the monkey. Don't worry. <laughs> the monkey's talking. The monkey's talking with that sort of. They've put presumably David Lynch's mouth over the monkey's that's, mouth. That's his mouth. Yeah. And now I know why it's in black and white. So they can cover yeah. up the fact. Okay, I'm gonna have to keep watching this after recording. David, because I am. Um, David, this is basically 17 minutes of. David Lynch having a conversation with himself, but one of himself is the monkey. Called Jack. Called Jack. What did Jack do? Well, I'm going to fight. <laughs> we meet at a train station. <laughs> Tell me, Jack, do you know anything about birds? <laughs> and he has a stare out with a monkey who then starts to talk with human lips. Yep. Why? I don't know. I don't know. This is my Tiger King. Folks, if you want to get in touch with the show, <laughs> you can email us bigdamncontact at gmail.com. What we want to know is are you are you using Big Damn Cast as, a, as an entertainment crutch at these times? Uh, I hope you are. Let us bally well know. Um, also, tweet us anytime at Big Damn Cast. You can follow us on Spotify, 
Apple Podcasts, the YouTubes on the Big Damn Channel, and of course you can catch all of our lovely gaming filth on twitch.tv slash bigdamnstream. Yes. You'll notice we're on it a lot more nowadays. It's almost like we're all trapped inside. Um, yes. So do tune into all that gubbins. Uh, and until next time, I'll leave you with these immortal words from David Lynch. We meet in a train station. Coop, today you put me in mind of a small chihuahua. That's not how you say the dog's name. <laughs> Don't tell me.